You're going to hear an audio tape of Grandma Yola Banker, Grandma Yola Martina, Martinet, and I'm going to show you photos of the family. Uh, at the top of this photo, you can see the uh, figurines from the Wizard of Oz, uh, the little Tin Man and Dorothy and um, the Lion and the Scarecrow. My dad uh, collected those. Those are his, uh, I guess he liked the uh, Wizard of Oz and uh, got those nice figurines. And oh, maybe that train, I think, came from his house, too, on the left of the lion up there. My mom, Yolanda Lani, was a little bit chunky, a little tiny bit on the heavy side there for a while. But then when we went to... Uh, Oh, I don't know when she, maybe towards the end of our stay at Newport or in, at UCLA, uh, she lost the weight and became quite thin. And Grandma Yola is talking about um, her parents, Dante and Ida Martina. I love, I love, I love like, uh... Let's see, I think she's talking about her dad's job as a cement co contractor. So, um, you know, he made sidewalks and um, stairs, uh, cement stairs leading up to churches or buildings and things like that. Time to, time to travel. Oh yeah, so uh, once the war started, uh, there was a lot of cement work to do. Mesa. World War II. So I think Grandma Yola is trying to say, you know, for someone who just came to America with five dollars in his pocket, um, you know, Dante did pretty well. He he didn't have much of an education, you know, didn't know the language very well, had to learn English, and um, uh, I think in Italy he only went to the third grade. I, I think both <clears throat> Dante and Ida only uh, completed the third grade in Italy, so they didn't, you know, start with that much. Time to, time to travel. And Brian's pants, you know, for for Kekun, for somebody, so someone uh, who had just venu had come to America uh, with only five dollars in his pants or in you know in his pocket, he would say. She said pants. Maybe she didn't know how to say pocket. <laughs> pocket. When? Dollary and so. Boy, we have a Maxine dollar in his pocket. When your dad came to America, he only had five dollars in his pocket. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have a lingua. He didn't know the language. Uh, her dad, Dante, always worked. He worked a lot. He worked very hard. Um, this is the beach right by the cliff that uh, Yola's son, Jack, lived at. And this is also the deck in, in his yard uh, when he lived at, in Santa Cruz there. Dollars in his pocket. Yes, I have a lingua. He didn't know the language. Uh, during the Depression, 
uh, I'll, I'll fight the tooth. During the Great Depression, Dante did a little bit of everything. You know, he, he took any work he could, and he just <clears throat> worked his tail off, you know, just worked as much as he could. Depression, uh, I'll, I'll fight the tooth. He did, he did everything? Uh -huh. he, he did everything to keep a job. He didn't, uh, of course, there was no welfare at that time, so you either had a job or you starved. And uh, he just took any menial job there was. He got it after he left uh, Moynihan's house. He found a job milking cows in Altadena, Altadena Dairy, which is still in business today. I love Altadena Dairy. The drive through Still in, by, in, in Altadena and, I, and, still, and still selling milk. I know uh, we would drive by, Grandma Yule and I, uh, on our outings, we would drive by the Altadena Dairy on, um, in Altadena there um, on Lake Avenue uh, when we were driving to Georgie's Pizza in um, La Cunada, and uh, I, I always wanted to stop, but we never did, just so Grandma could see it better or... Um, what I really wanted to do and I was going to do <laughs> for her next birthday, you know, for her 98th birthday, which, which never came because she only made it to 97 and seven months. So a little over 97 and a half. Um, I wanted to take a photo of the Altadena dairy and get it blown up, you know, make it a big a big photo um, of it, um, just something like that. Maybe put some photos of her, uh, her dad and her mom, you know, around it, just like uh, you know, make a collage or something like that. But I never got the chance. I should have done it for the ninety seventh birthday because there wasn't a ninety eight. And then, so, but the thing is, is he didn't know how to milk a cow, right? No, and, 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 you know, you have to build up to that. And, you know, all of a sudden they can't say, well, you go out and milk 50 cows a day. Yeah, you have to build up your hands with calluses and things like that in order to milk 50, you know, cows a day. Suddenly they can't say, well, you go out and milk 50 cows a day. 50? Oh, wow. Well, yeah, you 25, I think. Sink or something? Yeah, twice a day. Vent sink? Vent sink? sink? Vent sink. Means 25. Mm -hmm. 25 a month. Oh, he had to milk 20. Doi, 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 He had to milk 25 cows two times per day. 25 times two gives 50, so he milked 50 times. Mm -hmm. But I saw the apartment. He didn't know how to milk the cows. Um, so this photo was most likely taken up in Carmel, I would think, or that area where um, Bonnie lives. So this is Bonnie, and she has a brother named Kim. And Bonnie and Kim are the children of Paul Lefty Banker, which is Grandpa Bob's um brother. So Grandpa Bob here had a brother, uh, Paul Lefty Banker, and he married Martha and had two kids, Bonnie and Kim, and here's Bonnie. And so Bonnie and Kim are Grandpa Bob's uh, niece and nephew. Sorry, <laughs> So uh, Dante didn't even know how to milk cows, uh, and you know there's a trick to milk cows. You know if you know the the little secret tips, it really helps. And Ida right here knew all those tricks since she grew up milking cows in Italy on her little farm where they had cows.
Yeah, that's a great picture of Grandma Yola. This photo was taken at 9863 in the main living room there. And uh, that's a pretty big, long dining room table. Grandma Yola hosted really nice dinners. I mean, she made it look great like this, and then she made very tasty food. Uh, she taught herself how to cook. She didn't know how to scramble an egg when she first, uh, or she didn't even know how to boil an egg when she first got married at age 18. But over the years, she became a gourmet cook, uh, mostly just teaching herself and probably cookbooks and everything. I love that color blouse on her. Looks really good. Now look what a nice uh, dining room table setting. <laughs> it's, it's really, really nice. I'm sure her parents, Ida and Dante, really enjoyed coming over for those dinners. Grandma Yule always would tell me she uh, she felt bad she didn't invite them. She didn't make dinner for them and invite them over enough. Like sometimes uh, Grandma Yola would drive Ida and Dante down to USC so that uh, her son, their grandson, Jack, could work on their teeth for practice. He needed so many hours to become a dentist. And uh, after the long drive to USC and back home here, Grandma Yola was a little tired, but... Uh, you know, her dad would ask her mom, well, what's for dinner? You know, and um, Grandma Yola just always told me she really regretted not making dinner for them after that um, on those days and inviting them over. Um, but she did so much for them. She was a great daughter for them. They were really lucky to have her. And, of course, she was lucky to have them. Okay, um... Musical. That your mom knew, oh, yes, so okay. she tried to do it. Or did she take his job for him? Well, Paul meant your mom is so well. You got better, <laughs> mom. So, uh, Ida had to milk the twenty-five cows twice a day for a while um, until Dante's hands uh, improved and weren't so swollen before he got. Uh, you know, a job as a cement man instead. We must have been on vacation there. Maybe Palm Springs. Oh, definitely Palm Springs. I recognize the mountains in the back and the palm trees. We went there a couple times when I was little. and I'd get to drive a golf cart around, and I enjoyed doing that. <laughs> well, you got better. I'll you up a but uh, Ida didn't have to milk the cows too long um, for Dante's job. She just took over for a little while. And this picture here is taken in the backyard of my dad's house in Wrightwood. So Eugene Arthur Coates, Gene. I think when he was younger, his mom had a nickname of him, a nickname for him of Sunny, as in the sun, S-U-N-N-Y. So that's the house there that he lived in in Wrightwood, red, all over like a barn with white trim. And uh, that would be the living room that was looking out into the backyard here. And there was an apple tree in the right-hand corner up there. It seems like it kind of sloped up a little bit. It wasn't completely flat. And then the mountains would be just to the right, uh, you know, a couple streets behind. Uh, Wait, why did your mom already know how to milk a cow? Well, she'd been milking a cow on a farm. She lived on a farm, and she that was their livelihood almost, milk and milk. Uh, they had about two or three cows, and they every single morning from January to December, they would go into town where people didn't have you couldn't go to the store and buy bottled milk. So they, people would, she'd have to go up and down stairs and uh, carry this thing on her back, this maybe 25 pounds of milk on her back, 
which was pretty heavy for a little thing like she was. And then maybe the people would want, they'd say, maybe I want a dime's worth or 15 cents worth. What was the thing she carried on her back, like just a big jug? Of milk? Yeah, a big jug of milk. And then she just poured them out a little bit yeah, in their yeah. cup or something. However much they wanted. So it sounds like um, Ida, when she was a child or teenager, in uh, maybe even a tween in um, in Italy, um, she worked, you know, for her family, going door to door through town, you know, carrying the milk on her back from the family farm to town, and then she'd walk through town and go door to door selling milk and asking people if they wanted milk to buy and then she just pour out however much they wanted that's really heavy all you know 25 pounds maybe of milk on your back for i mean she was small you know five feet about and slender and young that's got to be hard it's a hard life <laughs> 